Hello, it's I, Andreen, Jewish American Priestess, here for a Hebrew we reading for the upcoming weekend, which will be starting on Friday night, the 22nd of Av, 5782. And I just winging it here today. I have, um, this is the stuff that was on my altar. I have three stones for you to choose from. This first is a, a black heart with white spots from Kenya uh, that was given to me by one of my daughters. Uh, in the center I have a stone that came from the stones that came to me for my sauna. So this is a sauna stone. I'm guessing it's some kind of granite or something. And then on the right I have a pink appears to be marble stone um, also given to me by one of my daughters. So those are your three stones to choose from today and uh, take a minute to decide which is the most uh, resonant for you and we'll do a little reading for each of these stones. I'll try to put the timestamps below if I can figure out how to do that. Okay, we're going to start with the spotty stone. Uh, I'll set these off to the side. And here we have the black, I'm guessing it's got some kind of soapstone uh, that has been dyed black and then carved in with spots because each of these spots is a, is a little bit of an indentation. I'll set that up here so that we can um, see it while we're doing our reading. Okay, so we're going to pull out, we're going to start with uh, three and we'll see if we end up with more. Um, the one in the center, it looks like olive. I have a uh, kuf in the past and I have sadi in the future. Actually, I, I pulled out four, so we'll go ahead and put mem above and why not? We'll put one more below. Seems to be what wants to happen. Samech. Okay, I'm going to have to shift this down a little bit so you can see better. Right there. Okay, starting out here, we have the letter Aleph. And Aleph, as you know, is the first letter of the Hebrew Aleph Bet. It is the number one. And it represents the connection and the division between heaven and earth. Uh, it has a very small, the smallest letter, Yud, up in the upper right corner. And then in the center of it, at a diagonal, it has the letter Vav, which is a connecting letter. And then below, another Yud. And the Yud above uh, can be representative of heaven uh, or the divine. And the Yud below can be representative of the earth or humanity. And the letter in the, uh, the, letter in the center, the Vav in the center, is that of connection. Uh, the number one is um, the is the you know the oneness of the divine, the oneness of everything coming together in creation. But Aleph also, uh, when you spell it in a certain way, says Lf, which means one thousand. So it's this uh, paradox of the oneness of all things and the multiplicity of all things this idea that that all of the universe is made out of the divine and yet it is still one thing. So um, it is also the first letter of most of the names of God. Uh, it is also the first letter of Adam which is the, the name that is given to humans. Uh, and so it's talking about unity and the plurality, unity within plurality. It is the beginning of all things. So that's the center uh, issue here. It's one of the mother letters. It, it does um, represent air and in creation and the breath in the body and the chest in the body. So it is, and it's the space between water below and fire above. So it's kind of this, mm, again, center letter, this, this, uh, this balancing that happens between the water and the fire and gives us a space in which to exist. 
So that is our central issue right now, this idea of oneness and balance and connection. What's come right before that is the letter Kuf. And Kuf, interestingly, is the number 100. So we have 1, and we have 10 times, uh, you know, 10 times, 100 times 1, which is 10 times 10. So 100. So this is also a sort of a manifestation of the Aleph. Um, and Kuf is often thought to be mm, about holiness because it's the first letter of the word Kadosh. Kadosh uh, is that which is holy. And it's also the last letter in the word tzaddik. Tzaddik is a righteous one. Um, it's the only letter in the Hebrew alphabet that goes below the line. So it's as if it's bending over. You can see this bent part in the upper right. It's bending over and going down toward the earth to, to look for the holy within humanity. And it is sometimes said to be uh, made up of two letters, Resh and Zayin. Um, although to me it sort of looks like mm, Nun and Vav. I don't know. Uh, you know, it's. It, I guess it depends on how you draw the letter itself. But those who think it's Resh and Zayin say that um, the letter Raz, or that sorry, the word Raz, made up of Resh and Zayin, spells the name, the word secret or stranger. So it has to do with inner meanings or Za'er, if you go the other way, which is a crown. Um, so it has, a, it has both this feeling of having, is connecting to the one, it's going from 100 to 1, um, and it has to do with holiness uh, in the world, or being righteous in the world, and also some kind of inner meaning or inner purpose that has come before this moment. And now we are going from the past of 100 into the oneness of now. And what's going to help us in this moment is Mem. Mem is another one of the mother letters. It is the letter that represents water. Maim Haim. It has to do with gestation. It's sort of a womb-like uh, shape. It, it speaks to uh, the water of the uterus when it is uh, holding an infant in its inside. So it talks about life, Mayim Chaim, and also the uh, idea of gestation. Um, so maybe an idea, it could be a literal child, but often it is just, not just, but you know, in fact, some kind of creation that is about to come into being. Water is the stuff out of which all of life comes. It is the number 40 in Gematria, so it can have to do with that 40 weeks of gestation. And it is also the number, is the 13th letter in the Aleph Bet, so it can have to do with the 13 attributes of the divine or the 13 spells that, uh, that are said ab about wisdom. Um, it's also the belly in the body, and of course water in the world, and it is below uh, in the three-part element of water, air, and fire. So this is what's going to help us, is a focus on creation or gestation of whatever is we have coming uh, right now in this, in this oneness, in this olive. Um, and what isn't going to help us in this situation is the letter Samech. Samech looks like a circle. It is um, about circles and cycles and spirals. Uh, it is the number 60 in Gematria. And in the Paleo-Hebrew, it looks very different. It looks like a, a, a thorn. It's got um, one a diagonal line with three lines across it, uh, like a sort of like a TV antenna or a, or a telephone pole. It is uh, a thorn in ancient Paleo-Hebrew. And in the Sefer Yitzirah, uh, the book of creation, it is linked to the foundation of agitation. Uh, so it can have something to do with agitation 
or thorniness. In, in the modern Hebrew, that circle part speaks to um, being surrounded. Uh, and thorns were used often to surround a house or to surround a field to protect. So it's about protection, but can also be very thorny. It can also be very mm, sharp. So sometimes protection maybe becomes mm, an imprisonment of some sort. So when you're feeling agitated or you're feeling like you're trapped in some kind of thorny situation, bring yourself back up to this connection with oneness and this idea of gestation that maybe you are surrounded uh, and agitated about that, but maybe that, that place that you are stuck in is a time of gestation. It is a womb that you are in right now in order to birth an idea, birth some kind of creative project, or birth a literal person. Um, and that will bring us to the final letter in our reading, which is the letter Tzadi. And Tzadi is uh, the first letter in the word Tzadik. And Tzadik is, um, is a holy or righteous person. Uh, so when you put, you know, Tzadi together with Kuf, it, it sort of, it represents Tzadik. Uh, it is said to be a bent nun, nun being um, a humble letter, and a yud on its back. So it's this idea of um, being humble or being in humility, but carrying the righteous, carrying that, that yud, that, that letter that is the letter of the divine name uh, on your back as you wander through the world as a righteous person. And it's the number 90. It represents um, the age that Sarah was when she gave birth to Itzhak. And Itzhak also has a tzadi in it. Um, so so each child can be a tzaddik is the, is the message here. Each, each child, each thing that is born has the potential for being righteous. Uh, it is thought in the uh, foundation uh, in the Sefer Yitzhak. So it's about contemplation and thought and righteousness and justice in the world. So going back and looking over the entire reading, our central issue is this letter Aleph. Aleph being that connection with the divine and the oneness of all things. Uh, prior to that, the Kuf talking about holiness coming into the life, uh, what's going to get us through the situation right now, help us through where we are right in the moment, is Mem focusing on life, gestation, the water, um, the belly in the body, and what's not going to help us is fo focusing on agitation and the thorniness of the situation. And when we get through this current moment, we'll be propelled into this time of righteousness in the near future as we move toward Rosh Hashanah. This weekend is a good weekend to contemplate um, the oneness of all things and move through to righteousness. And that is your reading for today, those of you, oops, those of you who chose this, uh, this spotty heart. May you have a pleasant and peaceful Shabbat rest this weekend. Okay, so for those of you who chose the um, the stone that is from the sauna, <laughs> the sauna stone, we'll just go with that. It looks like a really beautiful rock. It's very rough and sharp. Um, and heats up really well in the sauna. Uh, this is your reading for the upcoming weekend. And I'm going to pull out, it looks like five, I think we're doing five today. Uh, Hebrews from my little velvet bag here. The first one I have is the letter Bet. It gets very dusty in there. Um, these 
and get around together. Uh, right before that we have the letter H. Above we have the letter Kuf. Uh, Below we have the letter Tzadi. I'll try to make this more visible in a minute. And in the future we have the letter Dalit. Okay, I'm pop these off to the side and move these around a little bit so they're a little bit more visible. And let's see what your reading is saying today. All right, the central issue we have is right in the middle here is the letter bet and bet is representative of a house it is the second letter of the Aleph bet and it speaks about houses and buildings and worlds all the places that one can live or work or entertain it is the body in fact that that is the soul the soul's home in all of creation is the home of divinity. It is all the house of God. It is the first letter in the Torah. It it is the word uh, the word breshit, which means in the beginning. Uh, is the first letter in Torah, but the the Zohar says that breshit perm, uh, permutes to rosh bayit, which means head of the house. Um, it, it can speak about being a tabernacle or the mishkan or the temple or the shul, any kind of house or building. Uh, possibly, again, even one's own body. It is the first of the double letters in the Sefer Yitzirah. It has the, the sound of bet or vet. And in time, it is about Shabbat. So that's uh, what we're doing a reading about is how your weekend is going to go how your Shabbat is going to happen this weekend and in the body uh, soul it speaks about the being the mouth and it kind of looks like a mouth open um, it's again that first letter in when the world was spoken into creation it has the foundation binary of life and death and when I think about it being Shabbat um, Shabbat, which is the combination of the word shev and bet, which is to sit in the house. So rest, it means that's what Shabbat means, is rest. It is the direction above in the uh, divine temple. And it, yeah, so it, it is about being in the house. It is about sitting in the house. It is about resting in the house. It is about resting in your body. And, and it is, again, it's about the mouth in your body, maybe resting your mouth even. Uh, so that's our foundation uh, of the reading today is the letter bit. And what has come directly before that time is the letter he. And he is the letter that begins the word hineni, it's about presence. It is, um, some people say it is made up of a dalit and a foot that was given to it by the letter Gimel, <laughs> which is a, adorable, um, which, which speaks to uh, collaboration and generosity and giving and receiving. Uh, it's about community and completion and revelation. And it is two of four of the letters of the name of God. Yud Hey Vav Hey, um, and that word, the word that is the name of God, is the verb to be. It is um, permutated to Havaya, which is about being, and it talks about being, existing, just being present, being, being here now. It is made up of three lines. It has height, width, width, width and depth. Um, which correspond to thought, speech, and action. And it is the number five in Gematria. So it speaks to the five levels of the soul. The nefesh, which is the behavioral component. The ruach, which is the emotional component. The neshama, which is the intellectual component. 
the Chaya, which is the supernal component, and the Yachida, which is that one point of the divine. In uh, action, it has to do with the fingers, five fingers in the world uh, action, and we have five sounds in the mouth. Um, so we've got bit here, and here's the five sounds that are spoken with the mouth. And it can be, it can correspond to the, to the concept of light because light is mentioned five times in the story of creation. It is about sight in the foundations in the Sefer Yitzirah, which can correspond to light. And in the body, it is the liver. And the liver is the word keved, which has the same root as the word kavod, which is um, glory and honor and gravitas. So that being present, being, being mm, aware of the glory and the honor of all things in the universe has led us to this place of sitting, perhaps in meditation, being here and resting in the knowledge of how we, our place in the universe is. And what we have that's going to help us in our situation coming up is the letter Kaf. And the letter Kaf is, a, the, it represents the palm of a hand. And so it, it speaks to uh, giving and receiving. Um, all the things that you can do with the palm of your hand. So you hold your hand out to receive a thing. You can also hold your hand out to give a thing. It, it also can be, this is the first letter in the, in the word keter, which is um, a crown or something that's over one's head or kippah. Um, and so it has this idea of, well, anything that one can do with one's hand, re giving, receiving, it has to do with power, um, the power to give, the power to receive, the power to suppress. Uh, somebody puts their hand on the top of your head, they may be suppressing you. Um, and, you know, like the top of the, the sukkah has all this uh, material on it called shach, and that has two kafs in it. So it's this covering, sort of like the top of a sukkah or the, or the, the wings of shachina. In the universe, it it is th that which rules over the the sun in the sky and it speaks to the binary of wealth and poverty so that receiving of wealth or the giving to the impoverished so what's going to help us in this time uh, of rest and contemplation is that uh, using our hand to receive what is get, what is to be given to us from the divine, and also to give back uh, that which we have to give, uh, to maybe sit under the sun as it shines down above us, and enjoy the gifts of the of the world right now. And Chaf is the number twenty in Dematria, if that is meaningful to you for some reason. Um, yeah, and the negative side of it, it can be about suppressing or, or subduing someone. But in the positive aspect, since that's the position it's in here, it talks about, again, giving and receiving, um, being, having, uh, being covered and protected, but also receiving the sunshine as it comes down on us. And what's not going to help us in our current situation is this letter below, which which is Sadi. And Sadi is um, it's the letter that begins the word Sadiq. So uh, it's about righteousness, but it can also be about Sadiq, a justice, um, and it corresponds 
in the Sefer Yetzirah to the concept of uh, thought. So, as opposed to meditation, where one is just sitting and being present, thoughts can be distracting or challenging uh, in that pursuit. So, what it says to me in this position, in this reading, is don't get too wrapped up in your thoughts right now. Instead, uh, go back up here to this idea of sitting and being in a state of rest, uh, resting your thoughts, going back to being present, and and receiving what is being given to you without having to think too much about it. Uh, and then we can move forward to our future Hebrew, which is the letter Dalit. And Dalit is uh, a traditionally a doorway. It is the doorway through which we travel. Um, it is a gate, but it also speaks to humility and humbleness. Um, it's the first letter of the name David, and we think about David Melech, the king of Israel, who was a king who came up from very humble beginnings and also remained humble in the face of the presence, uh, even when he did things that were questionable, let's say. Um, it is the number four in Gematria, so it speaks of the four directions, the four seasons, um, it has to do with the four elements, the earth, air, fire, and water, as the four letters in the name of the divine. Um, there's a lot of fours that are written about uh, with regards to Dalit. Uh, it, it has to do with, like, if you think about the four mothers, even, Sarah, Rivka, Leah, and Rebecca, although there are way more, mo more way more mothers than that, but the four you know major mothers, uh, and it has to do with the four styles of studying Torah. Also, the the Pardes, the Pshat, which is the simple, the Remez, which is what is alluded to, Drosh, which is the allegorical, and Sod, which is the Kabbalistic uh, type of Torah study or understanding. So through these four ways of seeing things, we have a doorway to Torah or uh, study or understanding. It is one of the double letters, and it has this uh, binary foundation of wisdom and foolishness. And it is uh, the f wisdom, I guess, that we are striving for. Foolishness could be part of that, or um, yeah, but we're 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 trying to we're trying to reach forward to something positive, I think, in our situation here. So this shadow is it's hard to see here, but so we have the letter bait, which is about Shabbat and rest and being in the house. Um, before that, we have the letter hey, which is about being present, and what's going to help us here is the receiving that that palm that either shelters us or or offers to us that which we should receive and or give what we need to give right now in our life um, and what will not help us right now is the Tzadi uh, idea of thought thinking too much so let go of thinking sit rest in your house be where you are receive what's to be given to you and that'll bring us forward into Dalit into that doorway as we move toward Rosh Hashanah coming up in a little over a month um, the doorway to the new year and that for those of you who chose the beautiful lava rock in all of its raw glory uh, is your reading for this upcoming Shabbat and we will see you next time. Thank you. Hi, for those of you who chose the pink 
marble um, heart today. Uh, this is your reading for your upcoming Shabbat weekend uh, as we move toward the end of the month of Av. We're still sort of three quarters of the way through here. I'm going to pull out five Hebrews today for your uh, reading. Let's see what comes up first. Essential issue is the letter Mem. Uh, I think I can do lights differently. It's a little bit bright here, but let's see. Um, what came before that? We've got the letter Hey. Above we have the letter Vav. Hard to do this without dumping my tripod. Below we have the letter Gimel. And coming up in the near future, we have the letter Pay. All right. Make sure we can see everything. Okay. So in the center we have the letter Mem, and Mem is one of the mother letters. It is representative of water, Mayim Chaim, and the waters of life, that which sustains us when we are in the wilderness. And it is one of the creation letters, one of the foundation letters of water from which all life sprang. It is uh, sort of a, a shape of a womb. So it's about gestation of of humans. Um, it is the number 40, which represents the 40 weeks of gestation, but it's also about ideas or anything that is coming into creation in your life right now. So Mem is the central issue we have here. Um, it is the belly in the body, and it is, again, water in the world, and winter in the seasons. Um, it is the position below in the world, which is to say it is the lowest of the three creation elements of water, air, and fire. So it is the thing that it sits uh, out of, again, out of which um, life comes, but life exists in the air element and is sustained by water. Um, it's often, Torah is often uh, spoken about as being water, that source that flows um, f from wisdom and wis through which wisdom flows to us. And it also speaks about Miriam, the, the prophetess who had this magical, mystical well that followed her and the people of Israel through the desert when they were wandering in the wilderness. Um, so it is this life-giving force. And that is our central issue right now. Um, the number 40 corresponds to a lot of different uh, images and stories in the Torah. We have the 40 days on Sinai where um, uh, Moses went up to receive Torah. We have uh, the 40 days of rain in the story of Noah on the ark. And again, like I said, 40 um, weeks of pregnancy. And so that's what our central issue is today, this idea of Mayim Chaim, water of life, and and that idea of gestation. And what has come right before that is the letter He. And the letter He is um, the first letter in the word Hineni, which means to um, that it means here I am. It's the answer that one gives when one is called by the divine. He named me. I am here and prepared and ready for service. It is two of the four letters of the mystical name of the divine, the yud He vav He, and so it's a very holy letter. It's very much imbued with holiness. It, um, if you if you spell that word out vertically, you have the yud on top like a little head, the he like arm, shoulders and arms, the vav like its spine, and another he on the bottom looking like legs. So it kind of speaks to arms and legs also. Uh, it is about 
presence uh, in that I, here I am, but also because the name of God has two hays in it, and the name of God mm, is representative or spells out an unpronounceable verb to be or to become or continue becoming uh, is about presence. It's just about being and existing and, and being with all things and in all things. It's the number five in Gamatria, and there are many numbers five that it corresponds to the five levels of soul, the nefesh, which is the behavioral level, the ruach, which is the emotional level, the neshema, which is the intellectual level, the chaya, which is the supernal level, and the yachida, which is that one point of God, five levels of soul. It has to do with the five fingers, uh, so action in the world, and the five sounds in the mouth. So, um, yeah, the, the songs of the tongue, the songs of the teeth, the songs of the sounds of the palate, the sounds of the throat, and the sounds of the air. And light is mentioned five times in creation, the story of creation. So it has to do with light and the foundation of sight in the body, so light and sight together. And uh, as I've said before, the, it corresponds to the liver in the body, the organ of the liver, which is keved in Hebrew, and it is the same uh, root as the word kavod, which means glory or honor. So it has this gravitas, this presence, this being, this availability for service. And that is what's come right before this. Um, this, this being present, being available, being ready. And now we're in this gestation period, this receptive period into a gestation period. And what's going to help us in this moment is the letter Vav. And Vav is a connection letter. It is the letter that reaches up high and, and roots down low. It is uh, literally the word and in Hebrew. Uh, it is also like a standing person, someone who is standing up straight and tall um, and represents connection with the divine. It's like this very, very straight, tall person with a slightly bowed head uh, as if they have some humility in them. It is the number six in Gematria. It is, so it speaks to the six days of creation uh, before Shabbat. And again, it's just about connection. It's all about connection. Um, it is one of the letters of the divine name. We've got the yud He and then the vav He, so it connects those two He's together. And it is connected to hearing in, in uh, the foundations of the Sefer Yetzirah. And it's like a spine and a taproot uh, that connects earth and sky. Um, and it is also peg. In, uh, in the ancient Hebrew, it was, a, it was a peg or a hook, and these were um, often made of gold or silver in the, in the Mishkan, and they connected the veils together, the curtains around the outside of the Mishkan, as well as the veils around the Holy of Holies. So it's really about connection, and about holy connection. Um, and that's what's going to get us through this period of gestation, is that connection piece, connecting to the divine, connect, being a connector uh, between things that are, um, that are protective, and uh, and hearing and listening um, and standing standing tall but with humility. And what we have below here is the letter Gimel. And Gimel is uh, the third letter in the Hebrew alphabet. It is um, like it is about movement. It's about walking. Uh, it looks like a little walking foot. Um, it also is the word that start is the letter that starts the word gamal which is camel and so it's about movement maybe slow progress or movement um, and in this position in the reading it's it's this sort of what's not going to help us um, I, I when it, when it shows up here I often think of it as uh, running away. Don't don't run away. This is about movement. So don't move. Stay where you are. Stay here in this gestation period. Don't walk away from that. Uh, in space, it is um, the planet Jupiter, which is the, one of the, you know, the largest planet in our solar system. And in time, it is the day Sunday. Um, 
and in in the foundation it's this binary of peace and evil uh, which you know the word um, garden gone gone Eden starts with Gimel and it, so we have this choice of the tree of good and evil or peace and evil as opposed to the tree of life and and we're uh, you know we are encouraged to choose life rather than this knowledge of good and evil but we we have the knowledge so as we do let's choose not to move toward evil or um, disharmony you know peace is 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 shalom and that more more so means wholeness than than peace it's not just peace it's wholeness so I think of I think of Gimel as in this position being represented of um, of brokenness or not you know not wholeness uh, so when I think about Gimel in this position like I said it's about not running away it's about not reaching toward brokenness uh, and you know letting go of, of that which is evil or um, unpleasant in the world that which is uh, wicked um, so as we as we are in our gestation period and we have come from this, this uh, receptive um, availability of being here for being called uh, we've, we're now in in this receptive period of mem um, connect with the divine and don't run away and don't don't run toward evil particularly and when we get through all of this time it's going to bring us into the future position of pay and pay is the mouth it is um, it is representative of the mouth and s the speaking of creation into existence uh, the 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 letter pay itself you can kind of see that a, a letter bet could fit into it so it's the representative of this mouth that looks like it's speaking into creation um, the the first word of creation brace sheet which is that bit and since the universe was created through speech um, we have this compulsion to continue speaking creation we we create our own word world as we speak so we're heading toward a time when we'll have the opportunity to speak we right now we're up in listening or hearing and we're going to move into a time where we'll have the opportunity to speak uh, our truth and speak uh, our reality into being and also it's about prayer and asking and um, I think communicating uh, our our amends toward people that we have to make amends for as we move toward uh, Teshuva into uh, Rosh Hashanah um, it is uh, the binary foundation of grace and ugliness so ideally we're moving toward grace uh, toward beauty and not ugliness and also I see pay as a as a spiral it is it is this uh, spiral into the mouth of the divine like a labyrinth um, it's like a path that we're we're creating through speech and a vortex of the breath as it comes out of our body and turns into sound and substance it is the number 80 in gematria and 80 is the ultimate manifestation of the number 8 8 being in Hebrew gematria one more than seven seven is the number of days of creation so that finality that completion of seven if you add one more you have eight so it is infinity and eight times ten is infinity on steroids it is this ultimate manifestation of the infinite and it a, a kind of a glimpse into the microcosm of of the center of God and a highway to the macrocosm of the physical universe so we've got this amazing spiral of the infinite coming for us as we move 
through this time of gestation in this in utero here, uh, working with our connection, releasing the urge to run away or move toward that which is evil and into this final manifestation of the infinite as we move toward Rosh Hashanah coming up in a little over a month. I hope that those of you who chose our pink heart today uh, found this reading helpful and will help you enjoy your Shabbat weekend gestating what you need to gestate in order to move into uh, the infinite that is being prepared for you. Thank you so much for listening and we'll see you again soon.